December 14th marks the second anniversary of the death of U.S. Border Patrol agent Brian Terry. On the night of the 14th, Brian Terry was out on patrol with his BORTAC team in the southern Arizona mountains. During this patrol, they encountered one of the Mexican bandit rip crews that prey on drug dealers and illegal aliens being smuggled through this region. A gun battle ensued, leading to the death of Brian Terry. I first wrote about this story the day after it happened. Almost immediately, after talking with the FBI and the U.S. Border Patrol, I started getting a sense that something was horribly wrong. As we all later learned, this was the beginning of the unraveling of what started as an Obama administration political ploy for more gun control laws and has now become the scandal known as Operation Fast and Furious. Today on the phone, I have the honor of talking with Brian's older brother, Kent Terry. Kent, welcome to Texas GOP Vote. How you doing? I'm uh, doing great. Thank you for coming on with us today to talk about this. I know this is a, a sad anniversary that you, you wished you didn't have to face and uh, you know, wish you had some better answers at this point. How are you, how are you doing with this since this happened? Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm numb to the fact. I, I still feel like it, uh, it just happened yesterday. It, 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 you know, the way we've been the answers and the, treat and the treatment we got, and it's just actually we have got no answers. I feel numb. Like I said, it, it, I feel like it just happened yesterday. So. Yeah, it really is amazing how fast the time has gone on this. Um, we wrote about it several times, and there were a lot of other bloggers out there that did a lot of research uh, that kept this story alive until the mainstream media finally picked it up. Uh, Cheryl Atkinson picked it up on CBS, I think was the first national media to pick it up. And um, But the story was just being ignored for so long. What were you hearing in the early days of this incident? Yeah, well, a lot of lies. A lot of lies with uh, uh, the attorney, uh, Dennis Burke, out of Arizona. Uh, uh, he lied about 90% uh, of the story they gave us about what happened, uh, about the guns, everything. Uh, it just... Um, uh, and the feedback we're getting from... Uh, uh, the FBI, the stories about what, what they were doing that night and what happened, and uh, uh, different stories from different agents. It just said nothing was making sense. Nothing. Yeah, you know, that was the same feedback I was getting when I was talking to, to various people, and you, know, you could just tell right away they were they were in cover-up mode and trying to hide something. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, uh, like it happened, uh, we found out later on that uh, the FBI showed up right away, uh, and then you know we heard that Brian laid out there for five hours. We heard he like he they took him right away. I mean we don't we don't know what to believe. I mean till this day we still don't know what to believe. We heard he, he was uh, carried out of there as soon as it happened. Then we heard other stories that he laid there for five hours. So uh, why the helicopter the other guy out? I mean like the stories that we hear from different people, they're not adding up. I mean the people that are out there that night, uh, the FBI, everything. Now when you say helicopter the other guy out, you're talking about Manuel Osorio. Is that Arianas? Is that how you say his name? Yeah, I, bl I believe that's his name. Yeah, he, uh, who's the only person that's been convicted, I guess, in Brian's shooting at this point. Yeah. Uh, he pled guilty and uh, will be sentenced to life in prison, I guess, in March. But, uh, yeah, they, they helicoptered him out right away, and you know, we never have gotten the real story on the timing on what happened with Brian. No, we still haven't got the timing. It, it just, you know, uh, the ballistics, everything just seemed to take its time. I mean, uh, uh when they got the, uh, the Ivy uh, incident to happen, uh, the ballistics report come back right away. Brian's took, I think, uh, uh, 13 days. Hmm. Uh, it's, it's like, uh, how can they do one faster than the other? Uh, it's, like I said, we heard multiple, multiple different stories. One of the stories we heard early on was that the uh, Border Patrol agents were under instructions to use uh, less, than, less than lethal weapons when they first encountered these rip crews. Is that been proven to be accurate? You, you know what? I, I, what I heard, like I said, different stories. I heard two of them, two of the uh, uh, Bortec agents had non-lethal and two of them had lethal. And Brian was supposed to have a lethal uh, weapon on him, but he never fired. He never fired a round. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I've heard they all fired, and then I heard Brian never fired. Uh, but as far as, like, if they all had non-lethal, uh, I'm not sure. So, but, but as last I heard, two of them did and two of them did now, two of the weapons that had been sold into the what's now become known as the Fast and Furious scandal were found at the scene of the incident. And uh, initially, the Justice Department denied these were part of 
Operation Fast and Furious until Senator Grassley's office produced the documents that they'd gotten from some whistleblowers. Um, has there been any documentation as to whether those were actually the murder weapon, or was was it a different weapon that shot Brian? And then, again, that's all they told us. They never confirmed if it said it was inconclusive, but it is a 7.62 round, which is an AK-47 uh, that killed Brian. Okay. They didn't say it, those are exact guns. Uh, but my belief is, it's uh, like if these guys is knowing they just got in a gunfight with with the Bortec agents or Border Patrol, I can't. I, and, and majority dropped the guns at the scene. I can't see the murder being murder weapon being drug all the way back to 17 miles back into Mexico, knowing they just got in a gunfight mm -hmm. uh, and, and risk getting apprehended by other Border Patrol agents with that weapon. I, I, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a believer. I think one of them weapons there were the actual gun that killed Brian. Um, like I said, uh, it's, we get different answers, and uh, some people say yes. Some people say yeah, there's a third gun they found that, that night. And uh, I remember me and my sister that night when Brian got killed, we had a call, phone call that said they found, they apprehended one guy, four guys, and they did find the third gun. Well, then all of a sudden the story changed like a week later. Mm -hmm. I think there was only two guns at the scene, and but they still apprehended the one guy that was uh, shot twice, I think once in the stomach and once in the, the leg. And you know, they'd actually apprehended some other people that night who were later uh, released and deported back into Mexico very quickly. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, that's the thing, too. They said they apprehended four people, but they were released, released very, the very next day. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, they confirmed later on that there was four individuals out there. And, I, and to me, it's kind of ironic. You know, they caught four that night, but let four go the next day, and then all of a sudden there's four that were at the scene. So... Um, five altogether with uh, the one that got shot. So, you know, I heard different stories. One was an informant. That's why they let him go. I mean, I heard multiple stories. And, mm -hmm. and it's just not from ordinary people that told these things. It was, you know, Border Patrol. I mean, I, I can't say Border Patrol. There's there's all kinds of people that were in the law enforcement field and that told us this stuff. So, hmm. Kent, how did um, you and your sister find out about the incident? Uh, I was at home getting ready to go to work. My sister was getting ready to go to work, and uh, my sister Kelly, and my mom was at work. And they come to my mother's house first. Uh, she wasn't here, so they went to Kelly's house, uh, Kelly Willis, and she was just getting ready for work, and she got the knock at the door, and she knew right away. She, as soon as she'd seen the Border Patrol vehicle, she knew right away. And then mm -hmm. she contacted me, but she didn't tell me on the phone. Uh, she just told me I need to get over there right away. But Border Patrol were already gone by that time. And she told me, and I just, like, fainted and passed out. So. I, I just can't imagine the, the shock of that. Well, because I just talked to him, like, two days before that, and I was supposed to pick him up two days after he got killed. I was supposed to pick him up from the airport. So okay. I was like, I said, no way. He was supposed to come home, you know, Friday. There's no way this can happen. He, I just talked to him Sunday. He said he was coming home. Coming home for Christmas? Yeah, first Christmas in four years. Hmm. Wow. Kent, what is, um, what's this been like in dealing with, with the government? I know the, the legislative branch with uh, Congressman Isis committee and uh, Senator Grassley have both been real supportive. And what, what have you heard from them, and what's going on with the executive branch? Uh, I haven't heard nothing really since uh, when they found till they found uh, Holder in contempt, or, or uh, back in this past summer, uh, mm -hmm. was it June? Was it June or July? Right. I, actually, I really haven't heard nothing since then. Uh, any? Uh, they said you're going to file charges against them. I haven't heard nothing. But from Isa and uh, Gaudi and uh, Shia and Graf, tremendous job. The guys are top notch, man. That's how this country should be run with them kind of guys. But I was very, very disappointed how the Democratic Party. Uh, Pelosi, uh, Cummings, and which Cummings even said at, my, at the first hearing uh, when my mom was there about he's going to get justice, he don't care what stone gets unturned, he, uh, who's responsible, he's going to hold them responsible, and him and Pelosi walked out. Wow. Holding hands. Do you remember that? I remember that. So, that yeah. I thought, you know what, that was a slap to every military, every law enforcement showing, saying right there, your government's not going to protect you. 
You know, there's been a long history of, of the government turning its back on the Border Patrol with uh, the incidences that happened in Texas uh, with um, Johnny Sutton prosecuting, you know, several Border Patrol agents for just basically routine per police procedures. And, um, you know, it makes you wonder how much hesitation agents have when they encounter a situation like your brother encountered before they can decide whether to defend themselves or not. Yeah, they got they got more rights than, than our own people here. And it's, and it's I'm for everybody coming here and bothering themselves. I really am. But just do it the right way. I mean, mm -hmm. our, all our families here originate from other countries. We're all immigrants. But, you know, we all did it the right way. You know, coming over to Paris, uh, what is it, Ellis Island, I mean, stay in two weeks, whatever they had to do, get a job here, everything. You know, now they just, they just come here, our Border Patrol, our law enforcement, they get more, they get punished more than these, what these illegals do for their actions. You know, like uh, like the Diaz, uh, the Border Patrol Diaz, I don't know if you remember him. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Apprehended the guy the wrong way, and look what happened. So yeah. yeah, for our readers that might not be familiar with that, basically Agent Diaz... Uh, was lifting a um, captured prisoner up off the ground, and the prisoner started to resist, and he used a standard police tactic of grabbing the handcuffs and lifting his arms up a little bit backwards to create pressure to to get control of the, the person. There was no injuries, no bruising, no nothing, and uh, he's still in prison for that. Yes, yep. So it's it's a rough... Rough job those those young men and women have down there. I was on the the border uh, near Naco about a week or so ago, and uh, talked to several of the agents, and they uh, they had very uh, very kind things to say about your brother, and um, it, it was very clear that that uh, he was a top notch agent and uh, well liked by his peers. He, he was. He, he, he you know what he you know what he served twenty years of his life out of forty. He served to this country, and you got to figure from the time he was born to he's a teenager, you know. So really, he went from being a teenager to school, to the military, to law enforcement. That was his life. Hmm. So, I mean, I was just reading the, the John Shipley story, the FBI agent. I don't know if you heard about him. Uh, how this government is is treating these law enforcement and hiding and the corruption up up you know in the administration. How the John Shipley sold a gun, and then that person sold it to somebody else, and that person sold it, well, it ended up in Mexico. Well, you know, he served in prison time. Shipley did. He was an FBI agent, 14 years. Hmm. Wow. Uh, and, and then it, 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 you got these people like Newell, uh, Voth, McAllister, uh, uh, I can't remember the other guy's name, that sold these weapons, let these weapons walk, and not one, and killed two federal agents, Zapata, Mm -hmm. Our brother, and how many? How many Mexicans? Three hundred, I think. They, that was last count. And and nothing's happened to these guys. Nothing until until recently. These guys collected a paycheck. They're gonna get a nice pension. Uh, everything else, knowing that there's still forty five hundred to five thousand AK forty sevens out there that are across this country now, all up to New York, Chicago, Detroit, everywhere, that are gonna be involved in other law enforcement's deaths. And nothing's happened. These guys need to be prosecuted. They need. They, ICE needs to start a team that can investigate these guys and prosecute and, and, and have the ability to prosecute these guys. That's what they need. Clearly, we we had an opportunity to make a change, and unfortunately, the country didn't go with us on that. But uh, we do need to find a way to bring justice for Brian. Uh, last week. Jamie Avila was convicted for actually making the straw purchase of these guns that were found at the scene and received uh, 57 months in prison, uh, barely a slap on the wrist in my opinion. But And I understand that he made an apology to, the, to your family um, in the courtroom. How do you react to that? You know, like his, his, sister, his sister said it well. He got caught up. In a, in a corruption scheme, uh, habit he had, or uh, whatever uh, kind of habit he had, uh, he got hooked on the wrong crowd, and, and, that, and they drug him in. And I, I, I mean, I forgive the guy, but he wasn't—he didn't care at the time. He was uh, feeding his habit and doing whatever he was doing. And 
like I said, I think 57 months. Uh, I think it should be. I should be. It should be longer than that. Like I said, these these guns are going to show up in more deaths. Mm-hmm. Who's going to be responsible? Who's going to be responsible six years from now when a law enforcement agent gets killed or or border agent gets killed? Who's going to be responsible for for that weapon? Well, certainly not Eric Holder. It doesn't seem. No, no, not Eric Holder at all. He's invincible yeah. for some reason. Well, Kent, where do you go from here um, in terms of the pursuit of justice? Uh, you know, as long as I live, as long as I'm around, I'm, I'm going to be knocking on doors to find out what happened. Just not for my brother. There's, like I said, there's going to be a lot of people, a lot of injured people, a lot of weapons out there. It's, it's, it's as long as I live. I don't, every, like, I'll do the every stone unturned part. I'll, I will find answers. I will. Uh, I will. I'll find answers. And, I, and we got a lot of help with ISA and his team. And uh, I think justice will be served. I think it will. I, I think it will come down to they'll find out Holder had something to do with it. Well, we're certainly not going to let up on it. And I know the other bloggers that have been following this story uh, are challenging the government on every every aspect of it, as as we all are trying to do, because. Uh, there's clearly more lies that are being covered up here. When you look at, at what happened to Brian and you looked at what happened with uh, Ambassador Stevens in Libya with the Benghazi incident, there's a lot of similarities there. Uh, yeah, a lot. A lot. You know what? And, and it all leads. I'm going to ask you a question. How can holders, two main men, uh, what's his name, Griddle, Griddler mm-hmm. and... Um, uh, Weinstein know about this, and apparently never told Holder about it. Never even crossed his. Never even in a conversation over coffee, uh, over uh, uh, dinner, or lunch, whatever they did, and never got brung up. Come on now. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm certainly not buying that, and I know you're not either. And uh, you know, when the Obama administration first came into office, they set out a political agenda to prove that there were guns going into Mexico so that they could enable more gun control in this country. And they used that political agenda and created this fast and furious operation. Um, and it's led to, to murder. Uh, murder of Brian and uh, you know, murder of the, the agent down in Mexico and murder of Zapata. hundreds of, yeah, Agent Zapata and, and murder of hundreds of Mexican citizens uh, along the borders with these thousands of guns that they've let go back into Mexico. We, we know when you're investigating Holder, when you're questioning him, and uh, Horowitz, uh, uh, the guy, that, the inspector uh, that uh, did the uh, investigation on that uh, on Holder, uh, he said that Holder had no prior knowledge to gun gun walking. I mean, gun, Operation Gunrunner, Wide mm-hmm. Receiver, or Fast and Furious prior to 2011. Well, I found videos from like from Fox News media with with Carney. And even Holder talking about uh, starting a program uh, about, uh, and he even talked about Gun Runner and guns walking and stuff like that back in 2009. Hmm. There's, there's all kinds of cover ups here. And, like, and, and the inspector's uh, report goes right from wide receiver, uh, operate the gun runner, scan, uh, gun runner and to, to the conclusion of Fast and Furious. Nothing in between. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear that uh, that this goes all the way to the top and probably even into the White House. And I certainly hope the uh, the House of Representatives will move forward with impeachment charges against the Attorney General, and and if they can well, find a, a trail to the White House, take it all the way there. Absolutely, I hope so too. I hope so for for for, for my brother Zapata and uh, the Mexicans. The Mexicans that got killed with these weapons. One last thing. Tell me a little bit about uh, the Brian Terry Foundation and your cousin. Uh, is it Bob Heyer? Yes, Bobby Hires. Mm-hmm. Tell us about that foundation and what it's doing. Uh, yeah, Bobby's doing an excellent job, by the way, getting that, getting that started for us. Uh, the foundation is to help uh, fallen Border Patrol agents, uh, families, uh, in situations like what happened to my brother in Ivy and Zapata. Um, We'll, we'll help them uh, with funeral expenses, um, travel expenses. Uh, we'll help them with uh, the kids that are, if they got children that are in the middle of going to school, we'll help them with their finances uh, and just be there uh, supportive. So. And people can support the foundation by going to uh, honorbryanterry.com. And uh, there's a lot of information there about what's been going on uh, since Brian's death and what the foundation's all about. 
Yep. Kent, absolutely. Kent, I, I want to thank you for taking the time to, to come and talk about this on this uh, very tragic anniversary. And uh, I know it's it's not an easy thing to talk about. Um, my prayers are certainly with you and your family as you go into this holiday season, uh, still with no answers from our government. And well, thank you, sir. If there's anything that we can do for you in the future, I hope you will let us know. I will. Well, thank you very much again, and um, look forward to finding a resolution of, of this with you at some point in time in the not-too-distant future. Well, thanks, Bob, for keeping the story alive here. Appreciate it.